literally being in the street with hundreds of drag queens and Dan and Tom were dressed as nuns and um <laughs> I just will never forget it. it was it was just it was just totally the right starting point to ease me into this crazy process that we went on when we made the film. Uh, virtually put your hands together and welcome our fabulous panel tonight. Uh, we have director Jonathan Buttrell. Jonathan, welcome. Who's in, a, who's in a trilogy of talent there. She don't introduce them all together. We have Jonathan Buttrell, we have Tom McRae and Dan Gillespie, director, uh, screenplay and music and lyricist. Fabulous to have you here. Um, the wonderful Lauren Patel, who plays Pretty in the film, is here. Lauren, thank you for being here. And the extraordinary Ma Max Harwood, Max, thank you so much for being here. It is an absolute treat to get to speak to you about this film. I want to find out about the process about about casting and and how how easy or difficult that was to find in your your screen, Jamie and Pretty. It was a complex a complex journey because you're asking a lot because the the actors you're going to find are going to be young actors. You know, inevitably they're playing sixteen year old, um, and of for Jamie, you're asking of a young actor to be able to sing, dance, rock a pair of heels, do drag, <laughs> and then have full acting range, you know, and play 16 and be unashamed to, to play with his own effeminacy. And that's a lot to ask for a young actor. And to, so we knew that was, a, I've met over three and a half thousand young people in the casting of this whole thing. In terms of Shaheen Beg, our casting director, put out a social media call saying anybody across the country who feels they want to participate in telling the story, just send us a tape in, just send us a little video of yourself from your phone. And Max and Lauren both did that. Uh, Max wow. a little 50 second video of himself from his bedroom in which he spoke about his love of drag, he liked to play around with makeup sometimes. He would mess around with his sister in well, as they were younger, and he'd make her play Kaniki to his Rizzo. And, <laughs> and that's the story he are you told. And I just there was a natural charm, a natural magic to him. And of course, with Lauren and Max, we brought them in, particularly with Max. We brought him in. He had to sing. He had to dance. He went into a studio to sing. He then went, we put him in full drag. We then got him on heels. We did the whole, he read with me. He read with other actors. It was a full, massive process for him. But I, I still maintain that little bit of magic that he had in that 50 second video. That magic sees itself all the way through to what you saw on screen. And Lauren, I remember really distinctly, I was with Dan. We were in Sheffield in a, in, a, in a small dance school and she came up the stairs and she, she may remember it differently. I remember her coming up with <laughs> anorak on and a backpack and she was covered with a, I could hardly see her face. I got this little hand approach me and it shook my hand and she said, hi, I'm Lauren. And then we sat down. I, I think she took her hood down, I think. I did, I did. <laughs> she did. Yeah. Max, what did you know about, about, did you know anything about the project at all before you, you sent in your little tape? Yeah, I mean, I was a huge fan of uh, the show and had seen it like a year um, prior to auditioning and I I fell in love with um, Dan and Tom's music when I saw the show and I remember um, sitting in the stalls of, on, a, on a snowy February afternoon after I'd skipped school with my friends and we all sat there and sobbed as we watched the show and it was the first time I'd really seen like a queer effeminate hero that wasn't victimized on mm. a West End stage in the central character um, and I really fe felt like maybe this could be an opportunity that I could have when I graduated um, to maybe do it on the West End, never thinking that there would be, there would be a movie version. <laughs> wow. What was the, the in, in terms of kind of, when you had that first day on set, can you remember that first day and what that feeling was like when, you know, you were there, you were about to take on this role and your first scene, can you remember what that was? Yeah, I'll, n I'll never forget it. I I was told like, when we were getting the schedule through, they were like, oh, so your first day on set is going to be with with you and it's gonna be with Richard E. Grant. And I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> um, wow, that's gonna be daunting. Um, but actually the first day we were um, just a street across from the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield where um, the guys started this whole, whole entire project and we were shooting 
um, a section of um, the This Was Me section, which was a section 28 march. And my directive for the day was to observe. Um, so it was a quite nice ease in for me um, <laughs> to, well, to stand with Richard E. Grant. That wasn't so easy the first day, but um, <laughs> to stand with Richard and observe this march going on. And I remember literally being in the street with hundreds of drag queens and Dan and Tom were dressed as nuns and um I just will never forget it. it was it was just it was just totally the right starting point to ease me into this crazy process that we went on when we made the film Lord and I love their friendship there is something so beautiful in their friendship um would you talk to me a little bit about how you and Max kind of found that on screen together and, and and if you were allowed to kind of play around with it and try, sort of, you know, find what that friendship was on screen. Yeah, I, I just, I remember meeting Max for the first time after auditioning and Johnny telling us to go to Nando's together and get to know <laughs> each other. Um, and we were kind of just, you know, this was my first job as well. And we were kind wow. of going through this whole crazy thing together and I feel like we leaned on each other and kind of even now all of this kind of madness that we're doing now is it's nice to have somebody along for the ride with you so it was not very hard to pretend to be Max's friend I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> we're in we're in separate rooms today though so who knows <laughs> There's um, but, but for for you particularly, what I loved, Lauren, about your performance is it's you've got this brilliant comedic timing. You've got this ability to to just hit it perfectly. Is that a, a thing that's is that a kind of natural thing for you in terms of do, do you enjoy comedy? Is that something you've you know have you studied much of it? What's what's you know what's your background yeah. on it? Oh well, my background is kind of that like I don't have any background. To be honest. <laughs> I was, I was doing BTEC drama at Bolton Sixth Form College and I responded to an open audition on openauditions.com and <laughs> now I'm in a movie and we're talking to BAFTA and it's a bit mad to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Dreams can come true. Max, obviously, you know, Jamie's a real person. The the, the stage plays there, but for me, you've, you've, you've found your own Jamie, you know, and I guess that was very important to you for, for this to be your interpretation of him and your performance of, of what you saw Jamie to be. And, and, you know, from what you said earlier, bringing, bringing part of your own experience to, to that as well. Was that, was that easy to find for you in terms of how you would play him? You know, I was like really um, firm and, and on what I wanted to do. I really wanted to, I love all the boys that have played the role before and like John McCrae is just an absolute legend for creating this role. I like stand on his shoulders fully, but I was encouraged to not recreate anything that had been done on stage. And for me to do that and to do the story justice, I took it right back to the documentary and wanted to root my performance in Jamie Campbell so I could make it deep and make it feel real and, and lived in. Um, and I was lucky enough to meet Jamie Campbell and, and get to know him a bit and go to the pub and have a chat. And um, he was actually on set a lot as well, which was helpful um, because I feel like when you're telling any story that is sort of like a bit biopicy or is inspired mm -hmm. by, as the actor, for me personally, you want to you want to you want it to run deep. And I wanted I wanted to be 360 with everything. And also, you sort of like want to be respectful and not like not like completely go off the rails and make it something that it's not so I had the opportunity to do that by meeting him so I'm so grateful that um him and his um mum Margaret and his nan May were really on board with the project and were there lots and pouring myself into it was like essential I think and I, I didn't realize how essential that was really I feel like that was a that was a, a Johnny thing really that helped me do that like Johnny Johnny really encouraged me to go there and to um, <clears throat> open up and and not rest restrict what I was pouring into it. And I've taken that going forward um, because I think it's important and it makes it makes everything feel lived in and feel natural. You know, we're a movie musical and, you know, it's not the genre that's really typically known for being real and, mm -hmm. and reality. So I wanted to I wanted to, like, try and give you a a real version of Jamie, as well as giving you like a really camp, glamorous, ultra pop star version of Jamie, which I hopefully do in the, the more opening numbers that are more extravagant and glamorous. 